everyone. It's me, Ray McNamara. I want to tell you about how to build the Atari Punk console, which is a really great, simple little uh, synth DIY project. If you want to get into synth DIY stuff, it's a great place to start because it's like eight components. It's really simple. Uh, and you can, it's so small you can build it in an Altoids tin like this. <laughs> and it sounds like the best kind of garbage. <laughs> I don't know why it does that. Does it think we like that or? Eh. <laughs> this is gonna be the first in a series uh, because it's really simple, but it's actually expandable. You know, it's a good building block for other stuff. So first, we're just gonna start with the bare bones. Make a thing that makes a noise. Here we go. Here's what you'll need. Perf board, that's a five, five, six timer. You'll need two potentiometers, 10 microfarad electrolytic cap, 0.1 and 0.01 microfarad ceramic disc cap, a 1K resistor, and you'll also need a 9 volt battery snap and a jack for your output. 556 five, timer. At the top of the thing, there's this little nubbin. It's not the dot, it's like the dome shaped thing. That's the top of the chip. Uh, and the numbering system starts on the left here and, it, and you go sort of counterclockwise around it. So these chips are generally a little wide stanced so you can just roll them to bend their legs so that they will actually fit into your perf board like that. Oh, isn't that nice? Bend the corner legs just so that it stays in place. Uh, and now you're gonna wanna populate your board so that 1K resistor goes between one and two. So this ceramic cap goes from six to ground, and here I put it on seven to ground, and I caught my mistake later. This is the 0.1 microfarad. This cap goes from 12 or 13 to ground. Now the electrolytic, you gotta be careful with these guys. You see how the legs are two different lengths? The long one is positive, and the short one is negative. So the negative leg is connected to the ninth pin on our chip. And now comes an important step. You gotta check the schematic and make sure you didn't fuck it up. See, I'm noticing right now that I just, I screwed up. I put that cap in the wrong place. Yeah, And it's fixed, great. So now that I'm sure everything's in the right place, I'm gonna solder some stuff. So the next thing we gotta do is connect a few of these pins together. Right, so we're gonna need little bits of wire. So now you're gonna chop those up and we're gonna tin them. First, we're gonna connect two to six, bam. Five to eight, pow. Seven to ground, whoo-ka-cha. 10 to 14, whoo-cha-cha. Four to 14, whoo cha 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 all right, you've done a great job so far, so we gotta take a real quick break to do a David Byrne impression. Let the days go by, let the water hold me, let the days go by. So now you gotta drill some holes in your enclosure. I'm using an Altoids tin because I'm classy. It's a good idea to bring components with you so that you can test as you're drilling these holes that they're big enough. Mm-hmm. Get those components screwed in there. Now if you look at the schematic, You'll notice that there's actually three potentiometers. I'm not using the one before the speaker because it's just a volume knob and you don't really need it. And one pot will connect to 12 or 13, and then the other pot will connect to pin one. So because I've removed that third potentiometer and the speaker, the positive leg of the 10 microfarad electrolytic capacitor is just going to an output jack. So you're gonna to wanna to connect that to the tip of the jack, which is the sticky outy part. And then the inside part, the sleeve, is just gonna to go to ground. It's gonna to go to the negative part of your battery. Once you've done all that, you can connect a battery up and then uh, pretend that it's a musical instrument. Yeah! 